GPT-5 is out and on this video we're going to review OpenAI's website new homepage with GPT-5. This is going to be done through the first agentic creative team uh, within Adorim but I never saw what the response is on OpenAI's website. So we're going to go through this together and we'll see what GPT-5 has to say on uh, GPT-5. <laughs> Just to take you back a little bit, five years ago, I was very fortunate to be one of the first 1,000 people that got access to GPT-2 back in the day, and we proceeded to create the first implementation of AI into WordPress in 2021. It was one of the first implementations of AI into Chrome even at the time. Uh, that was a while ago, and of course, the background with Adorim and the design and the, my agency and all of those kind of stuff, but uh, uh, the point is that I've been following this very, very closely for a very long time, so I am excited to see what's going to come Come out here and I'm excited to have you along for this ride. So let's dive straight in. So the first thing I did is I set up the settings. So I went to the settings screen and I just dropped in openai.com here and it generated these uh, kind of, it did a discovery session uh, to understand what are the voice, what could be the goals. And of course, this is kind of like the user area where people can uh, modify this. I just kept it as is, uh, allowing GPT-5 to, to set the goals and to uh, review the work as well. It's always good to invite them one by one or in small groups to allow them to really dive in and find uh, specific elements within them but here I invited all of them just to see what we're getting and the review has two steps to it first of all there is the strategic overview the first impression when we're looking at anything uh, um, new for the very first time just from a quick kind of overview perspective and we already have uh, some ideas in mind that then frame the rest of the conversations uh, so in exactly that same way we have the messaging from Claro and only then we dive into the viewport by viewport kind of discussions and then the third step is to talk to the AI to talk to my creative team try to understand what can they help with why are they saying this how can I do something and all of those kind of things so let's dive in so first of all uh, with Claro we got uh, the first impression here uh, beautiful but vague uh, the page looks premium it does not quickly explain why a visitor should care uh, yeah I, I think that uh, important to, to note here is that OpenAI is uh, kind of a household name by now so perhaps they don't need to push on uh, this uh, as much uh, but uh, let's continue uh, areas of strategic improvement, uh, headline clarity, the hero is visually dominant uh, but thin on who this is for and the main benefit, that lowers conversions. A hierarchy and flow, large hero then scattered blocks, uh, users lose the narrative thread and intend to path uh, to action. Yeah, and we have all these kind of blocks uh, that are sprinkled around here. Trust and credibility, few enterprise signals, metrics and uh, succinct proof points that hurt purchase and trial intent. Uh, we have CTA prominence, uh, primary actions are subtle and low contrast that reduces click through uh, to product pages or trials. And then finally we have scannability, dense uh, repetitive modules and wide white space makes scanning slow. Visitors may drop before they find a reason to act. Mm, that's very interesting. So let's explore these points. Uh, first of all, from a uh, headline clarity. Uh, um, yeah, again, with this is, I believe it's coming in from a perspective of like, uh, they think everyone already knows. And so that's where uh, this comes from. And that's why there's even no kind of visual references to what uh, we're talking about here as a whole and again trust and credibility perhaps this is because this is the um, uh, this is again a household name so you know what I'm gonna keep that and I'm just gonna let Claro know that this is what I think and uh, let's see what he's thinking around this so Claro Right, so I called on Claro and I told you that OpenAI is a household name. I don't know how much uh, they should focus on conversions and building even more trust. And let's see what uh, he comes up with as uh, this runs in the background. But uh, generally on the other points, I do agree with a lot of them. Uh, so when it comes to hierarchy and flow, the large heroes then scattered blocks, uh, trust and credibility could definitely use with a few logos and kind of uh, highlight a, a, um, a few use cases, maybe a quick testimonial, they can get a testimonial from the freaking president, you know? And so let's see what we got here. Short answer, being a household name helps, but it's not a reason to deprioritize conversions or explicit trust cues. Different visitors arrive with different intent and risk tolerances, while you still need lean, measurable conversion work. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that for sure. Uh, audience variants, uh, consumers, devs, and enterprise buyers have different questions. Uh, yeah, so it kind of gives us the justification and, and it's not just like uh, agreeable. I think that that's the magic that we try to create with Adarim's uh, agents already uh, is that they're not just yes men, they're there to be the critical eye that kind of goes through uh, the work. But this is also one of the things that I felt are gonna come very soon in models where they are becoming more authoritative and more uh, authentic in the response rather than trying to please that yes yes sir kind sir uh, mentality but actually be a little bit more critical and uh, it feels that uh, gpt5 definitely brings this in uh, more than before before it was a it was a lot tougher for us to try and make that happen uh, but now they're a little bit more organic uh, which is uh, great uh, but then on the other end maybe that poses some risks if it's not scared of uh, disagreeing um, where will this take us who knows but then we haven't even finished the initial review. It then continued to explain how does great look like. So one line value, the hero must answer who, uh, what, and why in one sentence. Uh, yeah, I agree with that for sure. All the narrative layout that works visitors, promise, key capabilities, proof, action, amazing. This would be uh, a much better than the page that we're looking at here. Credibility strip, uh, you know, as I mentioned, like a few sentences from here and there, or uh, maybe some logos, brand logos. Yeah, uh, classic. And then we have the clear CTA is a single primary CTA with high contrast treatment and a single secondary action. Hmm, that's great. Uh, so that the user has a way out as well. CTAs repeat, but do not compete. Ooh, I love that. That's a great statement right there. And so then uh, it kind of keeps on to framing uh, what the rest of the team are going to do when they dive into the different elements. So index the SEO guy will map information architecture and global navigation. Lexi will focus on uh, rewriting the hero and the micro copy uh, based on the voice uh, of uh, OpenAI. And uh, Glitch will test uh, interactions. Pixel will tighten visual hierarchy. And Navi will valid conversion flows and there's a bunch with Navi there's a bunch of accessibility challenges on this uh, on this page so I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, what else comes up so let's dive in into the viewport by viewport review now framed by uh, this overarching uh, painting it doesn't matter if you're a household name according to GPT-5 or the way that we trained uh, GPT-5 you still need to work to convert some users uh, so let's see what we're getting here on the title. The hero image is uh, incentive. We've got a positive one. That's great. Strong visual impact. Uh, I agree with that. Then we have Navi on accessibility. Body copy sits over a colorful, soft focus background and likely fails contrast for small text. I agree for sure. Uh, let's skip this one and uh, continue with some of the others. The CTA learn more is generic and doesn't uh, set expectations. Um, yeah, maybe you can give me a better CTA than learn more. Let's see what you're saying about this. And the primary CTA blades into the hero. Yeah, for sure. They're kind of like minimizing it. Uh, low prominence CTA. Let's keep that for later as well. Uh, cool. So we have a few suggestions. One thing that I noticed that it didn't find this little close button, which is literally white on white. So I'm just going to uh, flag this and ask uh, Navi. What do you think about this uh, button? She has uh, the ability to run a contrast uh, checker as part of her tools. And so uh, let's see what uh, comes out here. Uh, but while she thinks in the background, we're going to continue with one more section and see what's going on next. All right. So we have this grid section, which is basically kind of like a news and um, straight after the header. And then uh, we have the image lacks alt text, super important for sure. The large image uh, appears unoptimized and not explicitly lazy loaded. For sure, this is way bigger than what is needed. The entire layout is kind of weird because this section is giving us the exact same pieces of information as all of these. Maybe there's one difference between the date and the, the time to read. What I would expect maybe is to have, you know, we have a bunch of space here. Just add a little snippet. I think that would be a better use of the uh, black space that sits on the page now. And maybe this is because of these images are squares and this one is not, uh, which again creates inconsistency that we've seen in different areas as well, like here. We have the main article headline is non-semantic div rather than uh, H1, H2. Mm, that's interesting. Keep this one. And we have a positive note about the strong typography scale and high contrast. Yeah, I agree with that. Looks great. So we have a daytime attribute. So assistive text, yeah, right, very important. And in fact, against the law in uh, most uh, Western countries uh, nowadays. Let's see this one. Clickable content containers lack accessible names. Yeah, again, very important. And again, against the law. 
Uh, but let's see what Pixel Guy is here. Large empty black space below the hero title creates weak content density. Reduce excessive uh, vertical padding or introduce supporting content components to keep the viewport visually balanced. Exactly as we mentioned, we should put like some sort of a little snippet here that would have made the whole thing nicer and probably would engage more with the reader that uh, doesn't really know where to stop and what to look at, uh, honestly, when I look throughout this page. There was one thing that I uh, thought that is important, uh, which was the SEO point. So so um, let's have a look at this one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically inspect this. I'm going to try and see if we have some sort of an uh, H tag sitting in here somewhere. And uh, no, nope, no H tag uh, here. Yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, right, they have it as a class, but not as a defined HTML element to really allow for uh, screen readers and SEO to scan through the page uh, properly. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. Let's let's see if this is um, more of a thing or just uh, just here. Let me view the page source, and I'm just gonna check a little bit. Uh, um, what about H1? Let's close it and see what we're getting. Right, we have one H1. So five H2s. Okay, cool. Yeah, so there's a bit of oh. All right, we have no no H threes, we have no H threes whatsoever, um, no H fours, no H two, so only like five H twos, and that's uh, that's where it's that's where it's at. So I assume that this would be the same for these areas as well. So far, very interesting. I, I would say that the responses are much deeper. They're much more thought out than what was happening uh, yesterday. Uh, but uh, I would also say that it's a little slower uh, to kind of respond and bring the information in. Maybe this is because everyone is uh, playing with this right now, but I'd expect that to be the case going forward. On the footer, and um, what we're getting here on the footer column headings appear uh, as a visual text rather than semantic headings you use non headings so again this same thing about the titles comes up here this should definitely be some sort of an h4 or maybe h5s and with this now i'm just going to continue working with the agents to try and understand what uh, what good looks like uh, hey navi um, uh, run a contrast test and she will do that here in the background let's see what else uh, we have the cta um Please give me a few cool options based on our voice. Let's see. And let's see what else we're getting here from uh, the design. The prominent CTA blends into the hero. It's too weak compared to the low prominent CTA. Yeah, um, reduces visual hierarchy and click-through potential. We'll show. Uh, what should I do? And it's gonna give me exactly what to do in terms of pixels and height, and gonna try and match it to different areas in terms of contrast and all those kind of different things. Uh, let's see what we got here regarding, oh, there's a full story here when it comes to uh, this little close button that was, uh, uh, it took me a while to even see that it's there, uh, which is exactly why this is important. Close button, screenshot, uh, what's working? Here's an accessible, it has an accessible name, okay, that's great. Visual style matches the site's uh, soft rounded, uh, but we have low contrast and she ran a test here, uh, figured it out. Um, touch and click target is tight. Uh, edge placement and spacing, yeah, so she found a bunch of uh, points around this element specifically. And we can continue now doing that actually in every different area. I kind of liked the new sidebar uh, that they have here. Uh, kind of unique. Um, you don't see that very often. Got kind of more of an app feel than uh, than a home page. So generally, my impression is that it looks great, but uh, it doesn't tell the story. It doesn't uh, uh, lead to conversion, and so this is not a good idea for anyone except for maybe OpenAI and Apple, or maybe like there's five, ten brands in the world where where we can get away with it. Uh, but um, but beyond that, I would expect to see a little bit more of the product. But still, it was very, very interesting to see them in action, to see GPT-5 reviewing OpenAI's uh, homepage. Thank you very much for sticking around. If you liked it, I did another one on Apple's homepage uh, just when we were opening early access. So it's gonna be around me somewhere. And if you found any of these points interesting, please let me know in the comments what are the things that you think OpenAI should do uh, from the stuff that we've seen uh, right here, or what are your thoughts about their homepage? Thank you very much and see you soon.